Go on, and you choose two red. And then can you choose three of another colour? So you've got to get the same, because it's got to be symmetrical. So you've got to have two red. Go and get two red. And how many yellow have you got, Jess? Three. Three, so three yellows then. Oh. Okay, right. When you put one down, Jessica's going to put one so it's the same, it's symmetrical, well done. So, off you go then. Put one down, make sure it's in the square properly. Okay, now, do you want to take a photo, Charles? Just come and press, all you've got to do is press this button and it will take a photo. You come and do it. Okay, well, you've just took a photo of that and it's up there, look. Okay, so now you put the next one down so it's symmetrical, Jess. Well done. Do you want to come and take a photo? Come on then. Watch, you don't knock it, darling. Right, you've got to press that button there so and it will take a photo. So press that one for me. Yeah. And there it is up there, look. Go back around then. Come on then. Chelsea. Well done. What have you got to do? Can you see where that, that is? That's got to go all the way down to there. Go on then. Well done. Right, so now we're going to see if we can watch it. Okay, so if you come round here. Can you see that's when you put them in? That's very clever, isn't it? Do you think that's clever? All those pictures that you've taken have now made a film. And who else made a film? No, it was Jessica and Chelsea. Was it a vertical line of symmetry or a horizontal line of symmetry? Horizontal line. I did. Vertical. Vertical. Well done. Shall we give Chelsea and Jessica a clap? Brian, first of all, tell me something about the, the range of children you work with and the key stage that you work with. Okay, I work in key stage one and I teach um, year ones and year twos. I've got uh, 13, year two, 13 year twos and the rest are year ones. So run through some of the, the ways that you use the Genie Visualizer. Um, I use it a lot um, in introdu introductions. Um, because it's, you're able to show um, more on, a, on the visualiser um, than you would obviously if you've got something hold, holding something up um, and the children respond well to the visualiser. Uh, I use it in the introductions and I also use it um, for plenaries. Um, when they've done their work, I usually show their work if they've worked really hard. Um, I'll choose them or their work to put under the visualiser and then share it with the rest of the class. Because that was the interesting thing I, I was watching, that the children took a real pride and it, it boosted their confidence to see their work being displayed in that way. It does, yes. And also the other children will make comments about their work as well, which um, appears to raise standards because if, if another child has noticed that they've put a full stop in the wrong place or they haven't used a capital letter or something like that, although to the child it's a good piece of work, um, for me, to, for me to come to me and say, uh, if I say to them, oh, what about capital letter and a full stop here? It sort of demoralises them a bit, whereas if a child says, or oh, perhaps you could have used it, it's, it's different for them and they take that on board, rather than if I say it, it demoralises them a bit. So it gives them a little bit of, of sort of peer coordination as it well? It does, yes. Yeah, and they work together. They do um, work together in pairs or groups to talk about the work that they, s they see on the board and we think about three things that we can do to improve the work or three things that they like about the work. Obviously if it's a good piece of work um, we say what do find three things that you like about the work. It what might be using wow words or capital letters and full stops. So it, it does, it boosts, boosts their confidence. Bryony, you've been teaching now for over 10 years. You must have seen a lot of changes and how has sort of preparing your class, 
delivering your class changed using the Genie Visualizer than if you'd have tried to do this sort of seven years ago? With the Visualizer, it helps um, focus the children um, and you can just, whereas I'd probably have drawn, hand drawn a picture and written their words on that they needed, you've got it all in an instant. You can just put it under the Visualizer, um, print it off on the, on the laptop, from the laptop put it under the visualiser and you've got it there in an instant. Even if you need a book, uh, if you're reading a story, you can put that under the visualiser and you've got it there in an instant. Because um, it cuts down on resources really, because you if you've just got the one Two. book, um, you've got it there and the, uh, all the class can see it. Whereas before, you might have had to have six children around one book and you give like three groups out. Um, it's all there on the board. How's it helped you uh, with, with prepping and with, with marking and everything you have to do for Ofsted? How, how's it helped with that? Um, it cuts down on your time because you're not um, photocopying worksheets or things like that. Um, you can use a split screen on the visualiser. Um, so say if you've got th two groups but they're doing different things, you can uh, put, their work, uh, put one piece of work under the visualiser, split the screen and then put the other piece of work under there. So, so you've got two groups that are there, um, can look at the board and see their work. Whereas before I'd have pieces of paper hanging up all over the, wa uh, over the walls of the blue tack. Um, but no, it's there at an instant. And how do you think it, it helps the pupils? How does it, do you think it enhances their learning experience? I think um, as soon as they see that we're using the visualiser or anything like that, they're more focused, um, they're there with you and uh, their concentration is, is lasts longer because it's something different for them. And then if you can get the children to explain what they've done as well using it, then it teaches the other children as well. Because it was interesting to note that during your session you used actually what would teach them how to use computer skills as well so there's a whole different set of skills rather than just sort of literacy and numeracy. That's right. It, um, it allows children who, aren't, who wouldn't really or necessarily have access to um, computers or technology at home um, and also well we've got to develop their skills so I usually choose those to teach others how to use it as well so once they've, they've been shown what to do they can there go and sh show other children. And when it comes to assessing pupils, marking them, how have you found it's, it's helped in that area? Because you keep, obviously save their work or uh, animation or whatever it is you're doing, you can, you can always, it's always there, you can relate to it um, and pull it up at any time you need to. If you need evidence for certain areas or certain levels, uh, then you can just pull it up and you've got it there. Now, obviously, you use the Genie Visualizer in a, a lot of different ways, but can you think of one sort of area that you've used it in that's been really beneficial? They've really enjoyed um, looking at maps. Uh, we were looking at maps of the world and where places were, and um, we were talking about Great Britain uh, last week, and I said, who's been to Wales, who's been to Scotland? Some people put their hand up, and I said, who's been to England? Well. Some of them didn't even put their hand up, so I had to explain that actually we're in England now. Um, and just to do, uh, focus on England and then zoom out so they could see the whole world, because somebody said that they lived in Africa. Um, and I could actually show them on the map that was under the visualiser that Africa was actually over here and this is where they are. It was just so they got a concept of where places were in, in the world. I thought that, that was probably, you know, most beneficial really from... Uh, that point of view.